All right, all right. Hey, man, great Yo, job. Way thanks. to keep the ball rolling. Thanks, man. I'm excited about where we're headed. Um, you, had a, you had a big, big little section there. Big, a lot. big little section. Big it, was, little. it was one little chapter, but there was a lot in it. It was really focused. Like he was focused on that law versus faith kind of piece. Yeah. But yeah. He talks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, get, it gets deep really fast. Yeah, like, uh, and he dives right in. That, that's why I like Galatians. He, he uh -huh. cuts to the chase. Um, one of, one of the, I'm going to ask you something practical, and then something on the other side is. Um, I'll start with the hard question first, and then we'll end with the practical, practical side because you kind of touched on both as you talked today. Uh, first, when, you, when it comes to law and grace, some people may misunderstand what those two things are relating to and, and may get kind of lost in the shuffle as they're reading kind of these contrasts between uh, mm -hmm. works of the law and, and a life of faith. Yep. So if you could just boil it down into the simplest terms, when Paul's talking about a life fueled by uh, the, like the law yep. or a life fueled by faith, yep. um, in the simplest terms possible as, as they're reading through this, because they're going to read those words a lot, law, faith, law, yeah. grace, law, faith. When um, I think law, when I think of living works of the law, stuff like that, I think of like following the rules. Right. Where you think of, I'm going to live a life that's based on following these rules, and that's the goal. The goal is following the rules, mm -hmm. right? Rather than a life of faith, the goal there is to have a, a thriving relationship with Jesus. That's good. And what that looks like is when you're in a relationship with someone, you want to get to know them more. And a lot of times when you get to know someone, especially like in a mentor type relationship, where it's someone you're aspiring to be more like, they'll rub off on you, yeah. right? You'll become more and more like them. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen there is, is the character of Christ, and not just through your efforts, again, not just through your attempts to form a relationship with him, but also through the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. That's part of the role of the Holy Spirit is to help us become more and more like Jesus uh, but it's, it's relying upon our steps that we take to engage in that relationship. Our salvation's not relying on that, yeah. but our character and how, how our character is formed and who we are as a person is based on that. So if I had to differentiate, I'd say that a life based on the works is about rule following. It's about mm. checking a list. It's about making sure you're dotting your T's, dotting your T's, crossing your T's, dotting sure. your I's, whatever. You know, it's about, it's about rule following. It's about coloring within the lines. Not that, not that rules are a bad thing, right. but when that's the point, you're missing the point. And when a, yeah. a life of faith is about cultivating a relationship with Jesus. So yeah. when you see those two things, it's about some first, I mean, the very first step of a life of faith is submitting yourself and accepting the free gift of grace that you right. don't have to do anything to get that salvation. Right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And then I'm going to just flip it on the, on the practical side. You did a great job at the front end, um, just given a toolbox and, and some things. What would you say to the person who's still like, once they reach that point, you, you talked about this, that sometimes you, you get to that point where you get behind and, and you're able to like overcome and say, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just get back on. Yeah. What would you say to the person who gets behind and just gives up? You know, what, what encouragement would you give to that person? That, that's just maybe yeah. a pattern in their life of something totally. doesn't go as planned, the plan falls apart, so they just give up on the plan. How, how would you encourage someone, um, especially in, in the context of reading the scriptures? I think one of the main reasons that we at Journey are so big on community, it's for this very reason, mm. is that a lot of times, if you've ever been at a really good gym or something like that, yeah. it's, it's a principle that applies there too, to where you feel like I can't do anything else, or I don't feel like doing anything else, or I don't feel like I can go to that next whatever right. it might be. Um, and when you're by yourself, there's no one there to pick you up. Now, you always have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and that's great, but a lot of times, it, it's helpful to have that physical person. Right. So having that community around you to help you, encourage you, not just encourage you, but keep you accountable. That's a very, yeah, that's like, a big deal. it's a big word of, of just being held accountable to what you said you want to do. I want to read the Bible. So do you have someone who's helping to hold you accountable to that, to where, okay, maybe maybe doing a year-long plan was a bad first step. Yeah. That's a big, that's a lot. That's a big commitment mm -hmm. to make. Maybe you need to find one based on, like, a keyword, like love, or, right. or one of those different things that you had there. Um, we got Zach's kids walking over here. They're real cute. Uh, but maybe you want to find something like that. It's a little short term yeah. that you can jump to and, and do that kind of thing instead of diving in the deep end right off bat. Right. So I think it's about community and then also taking the right first step. Because right. just taking a step totally is a good agree. thing. And trying to read a, the Bible in a year is a great yeah. feat. But, I mean, you're reading a lot every day, and it might be a lot to start with. So have the community then take that yeah. next, the right next step. Yeah, I want to reiterate that, too, because... Uh, I went for about three years in a row where I just read through the Bible, read through the Bible, uh -huh. read through, the, and it got so monotonous that I wasn't getting anything out of it. So now I've I've even switched up to on you version. I just 
I go through like a, a 30 day plan or oh, a yeah. two week plan or, a, great you know, I mean, and just kind of bounce through a couple of them. Right now I'm, I'm reading, uh, I think I talked about this on our, our podcast the other day. Of, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm reading through the Jesus Bible, but there's actually a plan on you version exactly, about yeah. that. It's got a cool devotion. It ties everything back to the person and work of Jesus, which if you're reading through Galatians is a big deal, you know, uh, how, seeing how the, the person and work of Jesus Christ changes everything um, no, you're exactly from right. the Old Testament to New Testament. And I mean, so. I'm looking through here, like I click popular topics. You got Christian living. We got wisdom, seeking wisdom. You got yeah. purpose, like stewardship, next generation leadership. I mean, so it's not just like boring right. stuff. I mean, like, this is really, and these are like some really great sources that are producing this for us. Faith, trust, yeah. grace, encouragement, fasting, humility. I mean, like, and again, this is all free. I'm just looking up on my phone yeah. right now. Yeah. So, and so yeah, it's available. Think, it's free. And the big thing is just take a step, like you said. Just just take a step. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge step. Just take a step. Hey, Charlie. All right. Here. Hey, Charlie. Come here. <laughs> come here. We got Matt's daughter. We got Charlie. a visitor. Hey, Can you, you say hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you, guys. We'll, we'll see you next week. Keep the questions coming in.